Hey everyone, we all love to travel through airplanes. They offer an efficient and exciting means of transportation that allows us to explore the world and create memorable experiences. For our journey, we prefer to get window seats so that we can look at the breathtaking views. And if we are lucky enough, we might get a seat such that the airplane wings are also visible. I used to wonder how these wings could lift a big airplane to such a great altitude while simultaneously enduring tremendous air resistance and other turbulences. While most of the wings are made of aluminum, modern aircrafts are replacing it with composite materials and more precisely the layered composites. This change is mainly due to the unique benefits that layered composites offer. But do you ever wonder how these layered composites, which are just fibers and matrix to start with, are able to get into this stiff form and withstand such high resistance? For this, we must understand the various manufacturing methods that layered composites employ and comprehend the benefits and drawbacks of each. Ready? Let's get started. The first manufacturing method that we will look into is the wet layer process. It is a popular method used to prepare layered composites, which are materials composed of two or more distinct layers with different properties. This technique involves impregnating reinforcement fibers with a liquid resin and then layering them together to form a composite structure. Wet lap method is used to manufacture a variety of components like the ones listed here. In the wet layer process, the steps include cutting and arranging reinforcement fibers like carbon fiber or fiberglass, mixing liquid resin such as epoxy or polyester for impregnating the fibers, saturating fibers with resin using brush or vacuum bagging, stacking impregnated fibers according to design and pressing to remove air bubbles, curing or hardening the composite structures by applying heat or curing at room temperature depending on the resin system. Let's look at the pros and cons of this method. This method is cost effective and allows for flexibility in design and customization. It is relatively simple to learn and provides good strength and stiffness. Speaking about drawbacks, the wet layer process is labor intensive. Achieving consistent quality can be challenging with wet layer. Health and safety concerns and longer curing time are other drawbacks of this process. Now let's look at the next manufacturing method, which is the pre-preg layup method. This technique involves using pre-impregnated reinforcement fibers known as pre-pregs, which are already impregnated with a resin system. Pre-preg layup is used to manufacture a variety of components like the ones shown here. The pre-preg layup process starts with selecting appropriate pre-preg material. After cutting and shaping the material, the pre-preg layers are stacked together according to the desired design and orientation. Once the layers are stacked, a process called debulking is performed. This involves applying pressure, usually by using vacuum bags or presses, to remove excess air and ensure good contact between the layers. Lastly, the structure is cured by applying heat and pressure. The curing process allows the resin to flow and bond the layers together, resulting in a solid composite structure. This can be done in an autoclave or using other curing methods. Now let's look at the pros and cons of this method. The pre-preg layer process offers consistent quality, thus making them ideal for applications where uniformity is critical. Since this process doesn't require manual resin impregnation, there is saving in both time and labor requirement. Improved material handling and higher mechanical performance are some of the other advantages that you get with this process. Some of the drawbacks of this process are higher cost, limited shelf life and requirement of specialized equipment. The two processes that were mentioned earlier require curing at the end to produce the final product. 
So let's look into the curing processes. The first curing process is compaction and vacuum bagging. This technique involves using compaction methods such as vacuum bagging. A vacuum bag is placed over the layered composites to create an airtight seal. A vacuum is then applied, drawing out the air and compacting the layers together. This process helps remove air voids and ensures good contact between the layers. Vacuum bagging is used in the manufacture of a variety of components like the ones listed here. The second curing process is autoclave cure. This technique involves applying heat and pressure within an autoclave chamber which is sealed and pressurized to consolidate and cure the composite layers. The temperature and pressure within the chamber are carefully controlled according to the resin manufacturer's specifications. This process causes the resin to cure and solidify, creating a strong bond between the layers. Autoclave cure is used in the manufacture of different components like the ones mentioned here. Both these curing processes have some pros and cons. The compaction and vacuum bagging process ensures better consolidation of the composite layers. This process effectively removes trapped air and volatile gases, reducing the presence of voids within the composite structure. Also, the use of vacuum bagging helps achieve consistent results by exerting uniform pressure and ensuring uniform resin distribution throughout the layers. Talking about drawbacks, this process is labor and time intensive. The effectiveness of the vacuum bagging technique may be limited for thicker composites. The autoclave cure process produces composites with superior mechanical properties. It also helps to achieve consistent results by exerting uniform pressure and temperature throughout the composite structure. The autoclave process is particularly effective for thick composites. Reduction of voids is another benefit that you get with this curing process. On the other hand, higher cost, limitations on the size of composite structures that can be cured and the complexity involved in this process are some of the drawbacks of this curing process. Now let's look into another manufacturing process which is the resin transfer molding or RTM process. This technique involves injecting liquid resin into a closed mold containing pre-placed reinforcement fibers. RTM is used in the manufacturing of a variety of components as shown here. In the RTM process, the mold is assembled and prepared with release agents. Reinforcement fibers are placed in the mold according to design. The mold is sealed creating a cavity for resin injection. Liquid resin is injected under controlled pressure impregnating the fibers. The composite is then cured using methods like heat or catalysts solidifying the resin and bonding layers. The finished part is removed and may undergo additional processes like trimming or painting. The resin transfer molding process also has some pros and cons. It allows for consistent quality in the final composite structure and is well suited for complex geometries. The closed mold system of the RTM process minimizes resin waste. It typically produces composite parts with a smooth surface finish directly from the mold, reducing the need for additional finishing operations. Talking about drawbacks, the RTM process requires specialized equipment. Thus, the initial setup costs and maintenance of this equipment can be relatively high. The process is complex and generally has longer cycle times compared to some other composite manufacturing methods. Also, the design and fabrication of RTM mold can be complex and time consuming. Coming back to the manufacture of layered composite materials, automated tape placement and filament winding are two different but complementary methods. Let's look into the automated tape placement process. The process involves preparing pre-impregnated reinforcement fiber tapes. Cutting and placing tapes onto a mold according to design using robotic methods 
applying pressure or heat to consolidate layers and promote resin flow using machines or techniques like vacuum bagging, curing or hardening the composite through heat or chemical reactions. Applications include aerospace structures, wing skins, automotive components and body panels. Some of the benefits of this process are precise fiber placement, high production efficiency and reduced material wastage. Whereas initial investment, complex programming and maintenance are some of its drawbacks. The filament winding process starts with mandrel preparation. The mandrel serves as a form onto which the fibers will be wound to create the desired shape. Continuous fibers such as carbon fiber or fiberglass rovings are precisely wound onto the mandrel in a predetermined pattern and orientation. Once the fibers are in place, a resin system such as epoxy or polyester is applied to impregnate the fibers. This can be done by resin infusion during winding or by subsequent resin injection. The last step is curing. The filament winding process is used in a variety of applications as seen here. Advantages of this process include high strength to weight ratio due to continuous fibers being used, consistent and repeatable process, enhanced structural integrity and efficient production rates. While this process is limited to cylindrical or axisymmetric shapes, capital investment and manual intervention for complex structures are other drawbacks. Thermoforming is a manufacturing process used to shape layered composites by applying heat and pressure. It involves the use of a pre-consolidated composite sheet or a pre-preg sheet which is heated and then formed over a mold to create the desired shape. The production of components that are often less critical and employed in more rapid manufacturing uses thermoforming. This process finds its application across various industries like consumer goods, automotive and aerospace industry and in various industrial applications. Thermoforming starts with preparing composite materials like cutting pre-preg layers or pre-consolidated sheets. A mold made from materials like aluminum or steel is designed for the final product shape and has features for easy part removal. The composite is heated to make it pliable using methods like ovens or heating blankets. The heated material is draped over the mold and pressed using heat and pressure to conform to the mold shape. The material is cooled for solidification and shape retention using fans or water jets. Finally, the cooled part is removed from the mold and trimmed for final dimensions. Let's look at some of the pros and cons of this process. The thermoforming process is cost effective as it requires simpler tooling and equipment. It allows for a wide range of design possibilities due to its ability to shape layered composites into complex geometries. This process offers faster cycle times compared to other composite manufacturing processes. It minimizes material waste since the composite sheets or pre-pregs can be cut to the precise size required for each part. Products made using this process exhibit excellent strength to weight ratios. This process is best suited for thermoplastic based composites. It introduces residual stresses and dimensional changes in the composite structure. It also causes surface imperfections and potential fiber distortion due to stretching and molding forces. Manufacturing layered composites involves several critical considerations to ensure the desired quality and performance of the final product. Let's explore some of the key manufacturing considerations. Cure kinetics refers to the process of resin curing and the associated chemical reactions that occur during composite manufacturing. It is crucial to understand the cure kinetics of the chosen resin system to optimize the curing process and parameters such as temperature, time and pressure. Proper control of the cure kinetics ensures complete resin curing, achieving the desired mechanical properties and minimizing the potential for curing defects. 
residual stresses can develop during the manufacturing process due to various reasons. Residual stresses can start to develop as part of the transition of resin from a rubbery state to glass state through the cure and cooling. These stresses can impact the dimensional stability and mechanical properties of the composite. It is essential to carefully control the curing process parameters, use appropriate tooling and fixtures, and consider post-cure stress relief techniques to minimize residual stresses. Layered composites may experience post-cure deformation or shape changes due to various reasons. Understanding and accounting for post-cure deformation is crucial, especially when producing components with tight dimensional tolerances or complex geometries. Design considerations including appropriate fiber orientation and layup sequencing can help mitigate post-cure deformation. Layered composites can be joined or assembled using either bonding or fastening techniques and in some cases a combination of the two. The choice between bonding and fastening depends on the factors such as load requirements, assembly complexity, weight constraints and service conditions. Both methods have their advantages and challenges. Layered composites may require machining operations to achieve the desired final shape, dimensions and surface finish. Depending on the nature of composites along with the potential for fiber pullout or delamination, appropriate machining techniques are needed to minimize damage to the composite structure. Co-curing refers to the simultaneous curing of multiple composite components or sub-assemblies. This approach offers several advantages including improved bonding between layers, reduced processing time and enhanced overall structural integrity. However, co-curing requires careful consideration of factors such as resin compatibility, curing cycle optimization and tooling design to ensure proper resin flow, consolidation and bonding between the layers. The curing of metal fittings into composites is a potential application for co-curing. As seen in this bicycle example, the composite bike frame and the metal fitting are co-cured. To summarize, there are various manufacturing methods available for layered composites. Each one has its own benefits which makes them a preferred choice for different applications that we discussed. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching and do check our other courses to discover more useful learning resources.